I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the Pledge of the Flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody, to the April 6th meeting. I think before we get started, I wanted to mention that uh, our Chief of Police, Matt Donnelly, uh, is actually attending the his, his FBI uh, continuing <coughs> education class. Is that correct, Lewis? Yeah, the big Cindy FBI. Oh, very good. So he won't be with us this evening. Okay, I'm looking for approval of the minutes of the March 16, 2016 meeting. So, we got a motion second. and a second. Any discussion on the meet, on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Financial report and disbursement of the funds. We have a motion to approve the financial report and disbursement of the funds. So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Yes. Look, uh, on uh, the uh, printout, there are blue books. What are they for? Blue books? Is that the, that's the vendor name? Blue book? No, it's the purchase for blue books. But is that the best thing or something? Do you know the, the vendor name? They just put a check in the table to Oh, it's a, it's a contractor's uh, listing. All kinds of contractors. Okay. And then there were um, What's the stipping and stripping pads. What are they? Uh, probably for a janitorial. Oh, gotcha. and, okay, thanks. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Budget Amendment 2016-007. Lou, you are on. Not you, isn't it? You. Oh, Steve, uh, you're on. Right, budget Amendment number 2016-007 is to recognize a $50,000 Elkton Downtown Facade Grant through the Community Legacy Program. And it's used for the purpose that's being used for the um, stock program downtown renovation. We have already received about $21,000 of the $50,000 grant and have given out to, to three of the recipients, $21,000 total. Very good. Right now, it's revenue, uh, so it's just money coming into us and then we pass it back to the amount out. That's correct. Very good. Do we have a motion to approve budget amendment 2016 007? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any other discussion on the recognizing the receipt of the fifty thousand dollars? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. We have a proclamation. Our fourth one of the year, two thousand sixteen. This is a proclamation for your housing month. The town of Elkton is proud to join the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development in celebrating the forty-eighth anniversary of the Civil Rights Act of nineteen sixty-eight also referred to as the Fair Housing Act. Whereas the 1968 Civil Rights Act guaranteed the right of all Americans to fair and equitable housing, prohibited discrimination concerning the sale, rental, and financing housing based on race, religion, national origin, and was later amended to additionally prohibit discrimination on the basis of gender and to protect disabled families with children. And whereas in order for the Fair Housing Act to be effective, and prohibiting discrimination, it requires the vigilance and continued <coughs> cooperation of all levels of government, the real estate, home building industries, banks, and lending institutions, landlords, and citizens. And whereas throughout Maryland, this spirit of cooperation is being provided through the efforts of our federal, state, and local government, and with the support of many community and nonprofit organizations. And whereas promoting equal housing opportunities to essential, is essential to our goal of promoting non-discrimination in all areas of life, and for all of our citizens. Now, therefore, we, the Mayor and Commissioner of the Town of Elton, do hereby uh, proclaim April 2016 <coughs> Fair Housing Month. Very good. Do we have a motion to approve the proclamation and accept it? So moved. Second. And a second. Any discussion on the proclamation? Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Next item I have is a uh, recommendation for award. Lou, did we have that proclamation to sign or is it uh, right. Very good. All right. Thank you. The um, 
first item I have is the uh, recommendation for award. Uh, we opened the bids for the well number 2R and 5 project early last month. And the, uh, all the bids and information was sent to KCI for evaluation. As a result of their analysis, they are recommending Wickersham Construction Engineering Inc. in the amount of $1,128,750 for the construction of well number 2R and 5. I would recommend that uh, the board accept that recommendation. That's a little better. Do we have a motion to approve the award project 2015-001 for the well houses 2R number 5? So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item, resolution R6, disposition of vehicles. Uh, we have two, I'm sorry, three vehicles, 2004 F-250, 2004, 2004 Ford Crown Vic, and a 2001 Dodge Durango, all full police cars. Uh, I need the board to accept resolution R6, 2016, as declaring these uh, old vehicles surplus so we can sell them at uh, the auction. Please take the original brothers. We have a motion to accept uh, resolution R6 2016. So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion on these? Yes, what, what, did the, what, what were the years of them again? They're all 2000, well, 2004 Ford F 250, 2004 Ford Crown Vic, and 2001 Dodge Durango. What was the mileage on them approximately? 98,000 on the Dodge Durango, 100 and some thousand on the uh, Crown Vic, and I, I'm not sure about the, the Ford 250. It's in really bad condition. It was, uh, I think, purchased using um, bug, bug money, not, right. not, not the uh, credit card money. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, last item, we'll have fireworks extravaganza to July 4th. Fireworks uh, proposal. Uh, <coughs> uh, fireworks extravaganza has conducted our fireworks for the July, with an exception, um, for, even for a number of years now. And I think they've done a really good job. Uh, this year, they are uh, agreed to do the, the show on July 4th for a price of $16,500. Typically, uh, they would require 50% upfront front and 50 upon the completion of the show. We would have a, a probably a, a rain date in there to July 5th, as we usually do. So if you want to have our works at, at this level, then that's what's going to cost $16,500. Previously, it was about a 26 minute uh, end came duration. What is it now? It, it usually lasts about uh, 30 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah, you know, they say after that, uh, people get bored. So that's probably the that's threshold. It's, they're looking, I'm sorry. They're looking at 23 minutes this time, uh, 3,115 shelves. Do we have a motion to approve the uh, fireworks extravaganza for $16,500? We have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, Michelle will get the permit from the state fire marshal's office, so she'll get that one more. Yeah, close, right? Um, I think that's all I have. I don't think there's any rain date No, I don't think there's any rain date that we made on that for the fifth. There will be a, yeah, I think the following day. Yeah. Right. Very good. Okay, the first thing that I had this evening, uh, Lou, at your staff meeting tomorrow, could yes. you have uh, Mary McGall reach out to uh, uh, Bob Alcorn, or if she doesn't have to reach out to him, if you could give me the answer. Bob Alcorn with the uh, Toys for Tots would like to put a banner uh, down at the uh, Meadow Park on, on our fencing. Okay in regards to uh, their Toys for Tots uh, golf outing that they have 
mm -hmm. uh, each year. Okay. So he's requesting that. So I, I mean, we normally don't get involved in that. So I told him I'd mention it. Uh, this Saturday, April 9th, is the opening day of the Little League Parade. And uh, the, the Elton Little League President Tim Eller has requested our presence uh, uh, down there for the town board. And uh, his message as of yesterday was uh, be there no later than 930. But uh, I think he mentioned to you 9 o'clock. So maybe we would be better off if we're there by 9 o'clock. But I don't think the parade starts till 10 o'clock. So uh, do however you want board members. Uh, I'll be down there probably at 9 o'clock and get me a cup of coffee and, and hang out. But it's always fun to be at the Elton Little League Parade. Uh, next week, April 13th, our workshop at 1230. We're going to use that date. There's nothing on the workshop planned at this point. So we're going to use it kind of as a um, fi final uh, compiling of all the budget information so if the board would like to be there uh, we're going to use that date on next Wednesday <coughs> at 1230 and we're going to hope that we can have all the revenues in all the expenditures in because uh, I promised the board that I would have that to them in a timely fashion there's been been some hiccups but we're going to get that done for everybody so that will be next Wednesday uh, we had uh, at our workshop on February the 10th, we talked about the farmer's market in general and possibly giving permission for a wine tasting event. And uh, what we've done at the farmer's market, I think if anyone's been following it, we've made some changes. Uh, so far this year, I think, uh, uh, I, I, wanna, I wanna say I, I love the vision that uh, Michelle has helped put together here. It truly is a farmer's market and uh, Currently, we don't have any local produce down there at this point, but we had a handful of vendors down there that were very pleased with last week. And I can just imagine how they're going to feel this week with the uh, thousand little leaguers and their families uh, going by them. Uh, but I knew that uh, talking to the vendors, they were just very, very pleased. And from a revenue standpoint, last year I think we collected $240 for the whole year at the farmer's market and just uh, from the very first day we've already collected over four hundred and four hundred and forty dollars so we almost doubled our output from last year totally for what we have and if we book it out like we think that we can we should be over to collect uh, about thirteen fourteen hundred dollars uh, which still isn't a lot of money but it's uh, bringing a whole different uh, venue to the town down there but going back to the uh, February 10th meeting, we talked about having a wine tasting. And Michelle, I'd like to ask you, because I think you've kind of been steering this, what exactly would that wine tasting be? Because I think we need to... What I, would, what I was hoping we could do uh, would be, think of your first Friday events when your, um, when your galleries are open down on Main Street. There's two ideas here. One, most people come up to the galleries on East Main Street, and you have art space on Main, it's, it's kind of segregated. So if I could get some area wineries who are interested, I, I, they've expressed interest, in coming down, no sales, just some tastings. Perryville does this, and it's very successful. Area cheese producers will pair wines and cheeses together, and I'm thinking we can go one step further, we get the galleries so to let me present everything on the <coughs> and they get their gallery. That then connects art space on Main, and you now have a nice loop where you can walk around and just go to those <coughs> places. But I was thinking we can only do it maybe maybe twice or so. It's, it wouldn't be a recurring type of a thing. But it gives another opportunity to give another reason to walk downtown on a Friday night. Uh, do we do we need to? Yeah, I guess we probably do need to make a motion to approve a. It would be a request for a waiver of alcohol prohibition. That's what I would be asking for for these a specific event, and we would ask for it each time, not a kind of a blanket okay to do it, because it's going to take a little bit of coordination with. So you're not actually <laughs> asking for the waiver now. You're wanting to know if we're going to get permission for right. you to move forward with this. You are program. correct, and then I can call. 
the wineries back and let them know and see if I can get a little bit of coordination of effort between them and then we can get some cheese producers as well. But I just need to know yeah. if I can do it. With, without voting, how do you feel, Commissioner? Yeah. Absolutely. As long as the, uh, the wording in there is specifically for that area, that event. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, and it would be very specifically yeah. for underneath That's the fantastic. farmer's market yeah, pavilion and nowhere else. Down. Charlie? I'm in agreement. You got uh, you got you got five thumbs, as they say. It's like uh, what was it, sister, sister, and Eber? We had five of them. Very good. Okay. Um, I had a uh, request from Jennifer Lapore, who's the 2016 Memorial Service Committee member for the Friends of Cecil County Victim Memorial Services, and uh, they're having a. If I could read it. To, to everyone real quickly they're asking for a donation so I just it's a it's an item that we haven't uh, funded for but I wanted to get the kind of the board's uh, opinion to this so if we want to put it in the budget uh, I don't know maybe a hundred dollars or so each year the state of Maryland pays tributes to the lives of the victims of homicide by having a memorial service in their honor it's very important to the families to have community support these events the criminal law process is so focused on the rights of the criminals that often the victims feel no one cares about them. Events like this help the families realize that people do care. The event is important because it's one of very few that focuses solely on the victims. This year, the Cecil County State's Attorney's Office and community partners will host the Northern Region's commemorative service on April 10th at Perryville Park. The town of Perryville has generously made the site and set up available to them at no cost. So they're reaching out to everyone. They feel that they'll have over 450 uh, people attend. Uh, I know the event is in April. We didn't budget any money for this this year, but uh, it would be something that I think that I'd like to put maybe uh, a few dollars in next year's budget. So I just wanted to kind of get the feeling of the board. Is this something that we want to help with, not help with? Should we help with? Any thoughts? <coughs> I'd like to help maybe just a little bit more having definitive answers about exactly what they do. Okay. Yes, help. Also have some more information on that. Well, what we'll do is uh, uh, I'll probably go down there on the uh, tent and see what it's all about. Uh, I will tell you, I, I will probably, if anyone wants to make a personal donation, I'll take it down. <laughs> <laughs> Check her cat. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I'll make it, uh, I'll go down and uh, take a look and see what it's all about, and I'll bring back some more information for everybody. Very good. That's all I have. Commissioner Van Renen, you are on, sir. And an absolute rarity, I have nothing tonight there. Oh, very nice. nice. Commissioner Gibbons. Oh, yes. Commissioner yes. Blair. I had a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> number one, speaking about uh, donations, I had a package that was given to me. I, haven't submitted it yet because I forgot to bring it in. So um, I have a package from the AAU uh, team from uh, E-Town. Uh, it's the local um, basketball players that travel and they wanted to know if the, the town would support them with some kind of a donation. Uh, like I said, I get the paperwork in and then I'll um, show them get more information on it. But it's a nonprofit organization who's uh, dealing with local kids and helping them travel and, and deal with all the teams and all across the states. Um, I uh, attended the five year uh, with the cat, <laughs> Gracie's Cat Day, and enjoyed myself in there. I had a chance to stand up on the mic and sing, but I didn't know I was going to do that. But uh, it was a, a good um, event to, to attend. I uh, liked the way they remodeled everything, and it, it was really, you have to go down and visit, and really, uh, I think you enjoy it. But I want to congratulate them on doing a great job over these last five years. And then I also attended the um, Farmer's Market uh, Saturday, enjoyed myself, uh, um, spent more money on people that was around me than on myself. So, um, but um, I enjoyed uh, the setup and what they're offering down there. Um, visit Hearthstone um, Road, I think you had a call on that today, didn't you? Um, the road is really, really, really bad. Somehow now we need to add that in the road restoration program. If we can do something, have you had any conversation on that? We're looking into it now. Yeah, because I've told you they've been 
is the uh, doing something at least five or six times. So I told him I will bring it back up tonight. <coughs> it is important condition. Um, also on uh, Castlestone, and um, I think it's uh, Chalice. On the back road, you, they don't have a sign saying this is Castlestone. Uh, I'd like to have that added up on the uh, the sign. It's missing. Which road sign? Yeah. No. Oh yeah, the street sign. Yes. <coughs> And also, um, there was questions about the traffic traveling down Whitehall Road. I know for sure the last couple of days it's been terrible with the speeders, especially where the kids stop for the bus. Um, I had called in the towns and seen what uh, the possibility of getting <coughs> a freeway stop sign there, because that's the only way you can probably slow that traffic down and have them make, make them stop halfway through probably. We talked about maybe getting the light with the uh, the speed on it, but most of the time people look at that now and they just go right past once they see it a couple of times. But I know there's a distance involved with putting a three-way stop, but at least we could look into it and see if it's possible. Because we, we went one road to try to get speed bumps, and that didn't work, but I know it's, a, it's an uh, emergency route. So I, I thought, uh, just go ahead and bring that as the board, not the board, but uh, ask for counsel on that uh, and uh, <laughs> the uh, public work to check in that for me. Well, then that, that's it. Very good. Mary Jo? Um, the first thing I have, I did send everyone an email. I don't know if everyone had the opportunity uh, yesterday <clears throat> to read it um, regarding the Cigarette Fire Company coming into my office requesting a parade or yeah, a parade. Um, it's actually the Cumberland Valley Volunteer Firemen's Association, so it's Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Delaware, and West Virginia. It's their 115th annual comp convention. It's a week-long convention, and the last day ends with a parade. Last year, it was in Newcastle, Delaware. Um, they said the parade took about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, we met with Lieutenant Waldridge. She felt everything was fine. They're going, they wanted to gather at Meadow Park um, around the track and then come up to Maine, to North, and disperse right here back to whether they're in hotels or the fire company. Um, so I didn't know if uh, you would like members of Singularly to come up for the board or if it was something uh, you wanted to vote on here or... I'd, I'd like to hear from them. You would like to hear from the board? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, ask them to come in and okay that'd be great um and the other thing on again on route 230 <coughs> i don't know if state highway is going to finish there are no arrows on that road still and tonight when i was going by somebody cut off again right near route 40 so i know they fixed over um by City Pharmacy, they did put the arrows in there, but if we could check on that, because it's really dangerous, especially at Route 40. Um, and May is Tourism Month again. Um, last year we did a proclamation, and they would like to know if we would do that again, and put the signs out that they have provided, and uh, they will come to accept the proclamation in um, the first meeting in May, if that's okay with the mayor. Yes. And that's all I have. Very good. Uh, I actually had uh, <clears throat> two things. The farmer's market, they start tomorrow? Yes. So tomorrow at 2 o'clock, there uh, will be action at the farmer's market again tomorrow. So I, I did forget that. And uh, Dan, you started uh, picking up Grass clippings of all things. Uh, oh, yeah. I think we should have a discussion on grass clippings. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how many tons of grass clippings would you say you got out of this first uh, couple oh, days? Exactly. First two days, 18 tons. 18 tons of grass clippings. Was that grass or mulch? Grass clippings. It's all kinds of it. The, uh, how are we doing with uh, keeping up like when we just started. How are we doing with our own parks? How are, what's the service? Is our mowers? I, I've heard some word out there that we're having some problems. Well, the mowers we have, we put it in this year's budget for three new mowers. 
And out of my fleet, I've got two of them on leg support. One of them really bad leg support. It's a question of put money into it or not. It's not worth it. So I'm kind of hoping that the board, if they okay new lawnmower, we can get the all season rate and get them into play pretty quickly. That's what I'm kind of hoping for. So. Can you find any money in your existing uh, 2015 budget to make that happen? I'll look, but I doubt it, but I will look. Okay, take a look at that and then bring it back to the board. Okay. Thank you. Um, Weren't we also, we, we never acquired the, uh, I think we had in the budget a water tr or a, a, a truck for the water and sewer department. Has that been acquired or not been acquired? It's in the process of hopefully being acquired. It's just unfortunately because of the size of the engine, the budget number, the actual number, there's a delta between. We just can't try to bridge. We're trying to bridge it, but we're trying to get past it. There's, there's a gap. It's not a major gap, but it's a gap nonetheless. So. Very good. All right, so uh, this is the uh, time we open up the floor for uh, public comment, and uh, I have signed up on the list tonight. We got Miss Pat Opal and Josh Brown from Elk Landing. Would you like to come up and say a couple uh, words to us? <laughs> and I'd like to say something before you guys say something, if I could, about Elk Landing. You want to tell me just be quiet? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, there was some discussion that I had with. Uh, maybe one or two or three or four members uh we were talking about uh the gate down at elk landing and uh you know we we have a very talented person that works for the town of elton that's uh, fantastic when it comes to ornamental horn work and and making the gates i think he did the gates at marina plaza mm -hmm. I would almost love to see something like that at Elk Landing, and I think I think that's the goal of Elk Landing also to create some type of beautiful gate. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I know that there was some discussion about working on it, but we're getting near the uh, budget request time, and uh, if you need some assistance or help, or maybe we, we didn't want to ask for anything tonight. Right? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you about some stuff. But what I wanted to say about the gate is uh, for those of you that haven't driven down at the end of landing lane recently is it's a chain link fence and it looks closed. And um, I know when Rob took office again, one of the things we said we kind of like to have the gate open. You know, this is a town park. But then there's some problems associated with keeping that largely intended park gate open. Um, the, the, a whole litany of things that do the gate open. So, so we've kind of gone round and round and we have a people access there, but we'd very much like to have something that looks a little bit more in keeping with some of the other town parks, a prettier gate, especially when you round Oldfield Point and you're looking down to the end of Landing Lane, it looks close. I think that's you know, one of the things that you, you said at home the time and um, certainly um, I think something, and our board's had some discussions about it, but I think something that's in keeping with some of the other gates in the town just looks attractive. Uh, we help kind of place people to go down there. But we appreciate that. That's good. Very good. Well, what do you have to bring to the board tonight? Go ahead. So, in, in that same vein, um, Pat has talked to me for those, and I know, um, I think um, DJ hasn't, um, you know, we haven't actually come to speak to this board in a long time. Um, you know, the town acquired that property in 1999, I believe, when he was first mayor. And, um, you know, there, there's been some growth and some setbacks and some growth and, um, you know, what we wanted to do was study about some of the things that have been going on recently and kind of bring that to speed. And, and I've had some discussions with Patrick over the last couple of years that maybe used to be when we first started out that uh, annually, a couple times a year that we came and just kind of gave you some updates of what, what, what's going on with your, with your department that you've entrusted with the, the foundation board. So, as many of you know, um, probably many of you always know, we had a, a pipe break a couple of years ago, which kind of was a huge setback for us. Um, we, we were a little short staffed on our board at the time, and since then we've, we've got a full board, um, which has been a, a blessing. And I'm sure Mary Jo can make it happen. Not having a full board sometimes how frustrating that is, but as far as the, uh, the board goes, we, you know, one of the people that we've acquired, and he's you know, got some quotes in the paper recently too, is, is um, uh, Bob Piazza. He's been wonderfully talented at doing some, um, some curtains and uh, redoing some upholstery and just really making, making the house look finished. You know? uh, I think some of the stuff that he's done here recently has really kind of pulled it further than it has in you know, a decade. Uh, so 
the, one, the other thing that we've been trying to do besides make it more tourable, more presentable down there, is really get in with the kids and the schools. And uh, that's been a struggle, you know, mainly because the schools don't have the budget for busing and, and things of that nature. Uh, so one of the things that we've been working on the past year that we're, we're close to un unveiling and we've been for a while now is, is a timeline that's going to be uh, reflected in a museum room, going to be reflected some signs outside, and going to be reflected on the website so that teachers and, and other people are going to be doing some, some walking trails to be able to uh, interpret the area better. Um, and in that vein, like I said, last year we managed to get a, a 200 eighth grader from up in the middle one there for a service project, which all one time, which was a, a daunting thing, but they, they, did a, they did a great job. And um, so we must have done a good job too because we're back again this year. So that was the thing that Pat really wanted me to you know, announce to you guys. Uh, maybe you can have an opportunity to come down that day and check it out. What is today? It's, it's April 28th. Uh, they usually get here around 9 in the morning. And they leave around 11:30. They have to bed at 5 before. And what we do is we split them up. We split them up into two groups and then into subgroups. Uh, for half the time, they do my work for me, which is they pick up all the dead sticks and drag them out and put them in a pile so that they can come down and mulch them up and everything. And that keeps them busy. And we. We, we started mulching last year, and it has been a godsend to be able to mulch down there. And these kids work their little butts off. They, and they apparently love doing it, because I was, the teacher requested that, we get, that they get to mulch again this year. Uh, and the other half of the time, we have uh, four groups, and they're giving them like a history lesson, part on uh, the Revolutionary War, War of 1812, and the history of outlanding itself with the river, uh, where the two rivers converge, and the type of uh, commerce and everything that went up and down, you know, between Baltimore and Philadelphia. And they really get, I mean, the kids really seem to like this program. And I guess my main point is, I would really like people to come down and see these kids doing something good, instead of always getting a bad rap. Surprise me nothing. And quite a lot last year since it's up in the middle were were um honors with benefits. Yeah, yeah, some of them, you know, never been down there, didn't understand, you know, sort of what the history was and and I think they really uh, gotta respect, you know, the name of their um, their community and what the what the land meant. So I think that was actually good for those kids. But like Pat said, she works from the death and I talk from the death, I think, for the whole time. He's worse than I am. <laughs> And then, and then last year, we got to the end this year, uh, the date's June 2nd, it's a little shorter, but we've got a fifth grade um, uh, They're going to Mount Harmon first, and they're coming up for the lane for uh, the first year for the uh, to, to the lane. So we're making some headway. It's been a long, slow process. We're making some headway with the school systems and actually getting the kids you know, aware of some local history. Uh, so like I said, the one at the end of the month here uh, is impressive. You see a lot of people saying a lot of people, a lot of, people, a lot of, a lot of teachers. A lot going on, there's a lot going on with 200 kids down there. Um, it's kind of scary when they call the bus and they're coming at you. Yes. But like I say, we want to show the kids in a positive light. And if the wing would like to come down and take some photos and put them in the paper to show what good these kids are doing there, we certainly would appreciate it. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, but also, I mean, <laughs> just, again, the DJ, um, if, if we've got it, if you guys have any questions about some of the stuff you're doing there, we'll be happy. And this year, last year we couldn't do it because the house hadn't been reopened yet for the uh, pipe breaking. But this year the house will be open. So part of their, the history of the learn, called Learning Service Project, part of the learning of it will be they'll get to do house tours this year. So the house will be open. Richard, anyone from the board have any questions? What grade though? The middle school is six, seven, and eight. So is there a specific grade that comes? Eighth to grade. Eighth, eighth grade. grade. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like eighth and fifth are the two that mesh most with, with the history that we can present to them. I think it's Holly Cove. Uh, Holly Hall? No. Elton Middle. No, the fifth grade. The fifth graders. Holly Hall, I think. Yeah, Holly Hall. Jim Fogan. And that's a unique point. But the kids live in Holly Hall and they have them going that short distance to know anything that exists about them. That's the point we try to make with the school system. <laughs> you know, is, is, you know, they take these kids, they bus them to, uh, you know, Philadelphia and some of these other places, and, and really, um, you know, for those who don't know, that there's some 
actual interesting and legitimate history that happened right here in Elkhorn. Um, you know, they, they call it the head of Elk for a reason. You know, we, you know, we were really an active um, port all active trading post. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that went on there. You know, my short versions of what I tell the kids is, you know, Route 7 is, you know, Old Coast Road when you get to Delaware. It's Old Coast Road because it was a 95 back in the day. I mean, they came right off, of, right off the shore there. They came right off Landing Lane, right on to Route 7, right onto the highway. You know, that's, you know, good and bad. That's that's how the British came, came and, you know, marched in. Uh, you know, that's that's where we had our, you know, the Hon Fort Hollingsworth was down there. That's where we had uh, our successful defending of Elton from being burned in 1812. So there's a lot of stuff that happened. Uh, and I think, John says that uh, one of our board members has told us that we were, uh, at the time, the largest uh, exporter of barrel rings and whiskey. So, you know, wow. something to be proud of. It. <laughs> Any other questions? We do have two rain dates, uh, the third and the fifth. Okay. But we can't rain this. Very good. Well, thank you. I just want to come and remind you who were. And Thank you. We're in the process of actually trying to really do some a lot of stuff outside now to make it look more presentable when people just come down and do a walking tour. And the gate would really, really enhance that. It would work great right with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I was always told I wasn't supposed to say anything about the history down there because Mike Dixon said I changed history a little bit when I talk about the landing. So I'm not going to get into that. You've done more than once. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is a time for public comment. Does anyone else have anything to say this evening? Do you hear me from here? I try not to stand up. <clears throat> Elk Landing. Does anybody know where the cemetery is of the Gilpin and Hollingsworth? The families? Do you know, Josh? I don't. There I is... I got one of these answers. There is a Hollingsworth, and I'm not sure which one because there was many of them in this area, buried up at uh, the little cemetery up at Glasgow, Glasgow, and what is that? Where the cross is it? I think Mr. Lutzenberg can take you to exactly where they are at. Are you yeah. aware? Is that what you're telling us? Well, my cousin John and I cleaned out the Hollingsworth oh, and Gilpin Family Cemetery right off of Walnut Lane. It's a Two foot by four foot granite wall all the way around it. The art early, we, we identified all the graves. This is five years ago. The early grave in here was July 1776. Wow. Teddy Grabless just cleaned it up himself. One of the representatives of the Hollingsworth family came to meet with us and they were going to take care of that. We have not heard from anybody at all from that organization. That's all part of your history at Oak Landing. Mm -hmm. Bob, is that land owned by, who, who owns that land, do you know? It's a right away that goes back to it, I have no idea who owns it. And the wall is around it? There's there? a stone wall that's this high and this wide, the cap on it's that wall. I'm glad you brought it up here in the meeting, because I think that would be something that may be the uh, uh, land to get involved in. And that's all part of that history down there. It is. And Where is it on Walnut Lane? You would Gilpin Avenue, where Gilpin Avenue comes out on the wall in the lane, right. it would be the second house on the right facing going north. There's a right of way between the two houses, between Fabrizi's and uh, Bill Evans' old house. I'd love to come look at it with you, and then I, I'm sure we could put you in touch with somebody. Well, don't put me in touch with it. That's, I'm not a problem. I did it once, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Snakes in there, poison ivy, and everything else. But I'm not getting involved again. Oh, no. but, but when they when they did the dig, the uh, the the, the um, archaeological dig they did here, they came in and presented that. Those people didn't even know it was there, and they're part of the history of the University of Maryland. But that should be part of that history of that the Hollingsworth family, because the Gilpins and the Hollingsworth, one was a doctor, and so on and so forth. They were, the, they were the prominent families of Elkton at that time, back in the 1700s. Very good. It's a shame that this thing is going to where it is, but I say John and I cleaned up once, and we're both in our late 70s, and we're not going to do it anymore, but Teddy Gravels did it uh, this, this spring. Teddy did it himself, and it looks pretty good back there. Lou? 
Can you go back there and take a look at it? It's <laughs> right back where he grew up. He ought to know he where, knows it where it's at. <laughs> Very good. Anyone else have anything to say tonight? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned.